Good morning. It is Jane with Scraptastic Yarns. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I've continued to work on the blanket, and I probably I need to move my marker up. But this is the last that I had gotten to so far. It's a slow goer, so let me find my stitch marker. Need to move that up. That way I can kind of see my progress as I'm going. Um, that is just a slow process, working it, you know, continually working it. I do love that pattern. I do enjoy it. It's very nice, very relaxing to work on. I did, um, we had a auction at our church this Saturday evening. And... Um, I worked a little bit on the circular shawl that I had started. So I did a little bit while I was there at the church with the auction before it started. Um, the auction was to raise money for a missions team that is going to Sartaneja, Belize. Um, they are helping with the adding on classrooms for a church that is there with, I believe, Living Ministries or Life Ministries. I'm not sure which one it is, but um, they raised quite a bit of money, so I was surprised. And no, I didn't buy anything. I didn't plan on buying anything. I was just there to support the team and see how it goes. And it was a lot of fun because there was a lot of laughter, uh, a lot of silliness, and a lot of... Um, provoking with the bids to try to get someone to bid higher, you know, that kind of thing. I did get to row 40 of the Bod Shawl, and um, that is going, you know, pretty slow for me. Um, a lot of... Uh, a lot of work around the house kind of keeps me from working on crochet projects. Which, you know, that's understandable. Um, but I do enjoy my crochet time, my sewing time. Um, I have bags that are coming up at the end of the week that will be for sale. Um, just didn't get finished with what I wanted to get done. So those will be coming up at the end of the week for a shop update. Uh... I found some more yarns that I wound up into cakes and of course I had them sitting on a TV tray over here getting ready to go put them away and uh, I'd gone to get a drink of water and I turn around and I see Izzy carrying off one of the cakes in her mouth across the room. That cat's something. She, uh, she loves taking things like that. She thinks it's hers. She wants to play with, and of course, it was a really brightly colored skein that she was messing with. So uh, I did find that interesting. The only thing I did get finished, and I'm going to have to insert a picture here, are the gnomes for the boys. When I gave those boys those gnomes, it, it was so cute because I put them in little gift bags. They took the gnomes out, handed me back the gift bags, took off running to their parents to let them know that the gnomes were here. And then they were showing all the other kids. I did have one of the little kids walk over to me and say, you make gnomes? Yes, I make gnomes. So I don't know if that means she wants a gnome or not. Um, she's one of our cuties. I, she's... She is very shy, but she started opening up going with Awana. But she constantly walks up to us and lets us know what she's learned in her ballet class because she's going to be a ballerina. And her name is Cora. She's beautiful. Big, beautiful blue eyes. Adorable. But uh, those are the only things that I've been working on so far besides cutting uh, the bags to be sewn and interfacing them, those kind of things. And then, of course, 
outside with the bamboo. The bamboo struggle is continuing. Um, I have reached an area where I can actually apply the um, killer, you know, plant killer, so I can apply that, not have to worry about it getting into the water system. So that is what I'm doing with some of the other areas where the bamboo is. I mean, it looks beautiful, it looks gorgeous, but when you realize that it will overtake your yard completely, um, yeah, and so yeah, I'm, I'm just fighting with bamboo. The other thing is, um, I did want to tell you this morning I woke up with Ronan on my chest, sniffing my nose and licking the tip of it and mewling in a, a real high-pitched mew. Um, generally, that is his distress mew. And uh, he's quite, you know, looking me in the eye like, aren't you getting up? Get up, mother, get up. Um, I come in and their bowl was practically empty. They did have a few kernels of food, so apparently he was letting me know that he was starving to death and it was time for me to get up. Those are the antics you have with cats. All right, guys, that is basically it for this uh, podcast. I do have a couple of um, other videos that will be coming up later on. Another shout out, um, as well as a healthy you coming up this week. I don't know that I have anything else, you know, besides the normal what whip. And um, I don't know, maybe I'll film a couple other things. I don't know. We'll see. All right, are you ready for a little what intonation? I know I am. Bear blocks traffic on California highway. Traffic on a California highway was brought to a standstill when a bear wandered out onto the roadway and paused to enjoy the view. Witness Dan Kane's captured video when the bear wandered onto the 14 freeway near New Hall Avenue in Santa Clarita about 7 p.m. Tuesday. The video shows the bear wander out into the roadway, stopping traffic. The animal looks around for a few minutes before turning around and returning to the hills. Motorists displayed compassion and patience for the bear, Keynes told KTLA-TV. He said the Bruin appeared to be a little confused. You know, dinosaurs, we always think of huge. Gators, we don't always think of them as huge, but when they are huge, they are related to dinosaurs. And supposedly they are very much related to dinosaurs. Absolute dinosaur gator seen on Florida school path. Wildlife trappers were called to a Florida school where an absolute dinosaur of an alligator came wandering up a path. The Pinellas County Sheriff's Office said deputies responded to the report of a large alligator on a pathway used by kids who walked to and from a nearby elementary school. Deputies contacted the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission for help reclo relocating the 12.5-foot gator. That's massive. PCOS remained in the area to keep the public from accidentally stumbling across this absolute dinosaur of an alligator until trappers contracted through FWC arrived. Deputies helped trappers capture the alligator and relocate it to a more suitable habitat far from the school. We always think of raccoons as being awful cute little critters, trash pandas, but they really are a menace to crops. Um, one of the patients that I used to care for, um, he had beside next to him a whole field of his. He grew at a garden there that was about a fourth of an acre. And the raccoons used to just tick him off 
no end. They would come in and destroy his garden. And they would eat their way through it. They don't eat everything. They would eat half of a bell pepper. They would crunch open a watermelon. But they wouldn't eat the whole thing. So he was never happy with the raccoons. Tokyo struggling to deal with crop destroying raccoon invasion. Authorities in Tokyo are struggling to deal with problems caused by an especially wily invasive species, North American raccoons. The city reported the number of raccoons living in the wild in Tokyo and its surrounding areas has skyrocketed in recent years, with 1,282 trapped in fiscal 2022, a sharp increase from the 259 caught in fiscal year 2012. The animals are believed to have been established a breeding population in the wild after after being brought in as pets and either escaping or being abandoned. Raccoons became popular pets in Japan after an animated TV series, Rascal the Raccoon, raised the species profile in the 1970s. The raccoons have been blamed for severe crop damage in recent years in the hills to the west of Tokyo. The local farm ministry estimated the animals caused a total of $2.8 million in crop damage last year. Local authorities said the highly adaptive animals have proven difficult to deal with and they've even started destroying the traps that are set out by the officials. Man. Now, this next raccoon wanted to be a soccer star, apparently. And there's video. A major league soccer game between the Philadelphia Union and New York City FC was interrupted when a raccoon ran out, on, ran out onto the field and evaded capture for 161 seconds. The raccoon made its appearance Wednesday night at Subaru Park in Chester, PA leading players to watch from the sidelines while stadium workers chase the animal trash cans. Seems appropriate, trash pandas. The pitch invade, this is marvelous entertainment, play-by-play -play announcer Callum Williams said during the chase. The pitch evader, dubbed Rockino the raccoon by MLS on social media, earned cheers from the crowd as it evaded capture. At what point are we just rooting for him, announcer and former MLS player Galen Carr asked. Workers were eventually able to capture the raccoon between two trash cans and carry it off the field. Officials said the raccoon set a new record for the sport. Rockino, the raccoon, spent 161 seconds on the field tonight, which is the most by a raccoon in MLS history. A team spokesman confirmed the raccoon was removed from the stadium by pest control company Hoffman's and safely released. Rest assured, our new friend was released unharmed, the representative told USA Today. Escaped cockatiel rescued from six-story window ledge. Firefighters in Minnesota used a supersized ladder truck known as the Tower to rescue a cockatiel that escaped from her owner and became stranded on a hospital window ledge. The Duluth Fire Department said on social media that the cockatiel named Nina escaped from her owner and was located on a six-story window ledge at St. Luke's Hospital. Firefighters arrived with Tower 1, a truck bearing a 100-foot ladder and bucket, and went up to rescue Nina. The firefighters were able to bring the bird safely back down to earth to be reunited with her owner. Thank you to St. Luke's Security for the assist, assist, the post said. Have you ever wondered if tacos are sandwiches or not? Indiana judge rules tacos are Mexican-style sandwiches. An Indiana judge resolved a legal dispute surrounding a Fort Wayne strip mall by ruling that tacos and burritos are Mexican-style sandwiches. Martin Quintanilla, oh, Quintana, sorry, 
the developer behind the new Quintana Plaza strip mall on Jefferson Boulevard in Fort Wayne, entered into a written agreement with the Covington Creek Com Condominium Association that was intended to keep fast food restaurants from opening in the block of stores. The agreement allowed for the opening of made-to-order sandwich restaurants, with Subway and Jimmy John's listed as examples, but barred traditional fast food restaurants such as McDonald's, Arby's, and Wendy's. The agreement also prohibited allow any allowed restaurants from offering outdoor seating, drive through service, or alcoholic beverages. Quintana struck a deal in 2022 to open a location of locally owned eatery, the famous taco in the strip mall. The condo association approved an amendment to allow the restaurant, but the Allen County Plan Commission rejected the amendment, citing the earlier written agreement. The dispute was brought before Allen Superior Judge Craig Bobe, who ruled that the opening of the Mexican restaurant would not require the original agreement to be amended at all. Bobe wrote, the Bobe's famous taco restaurant would serve made-to-order tacos, burritos, and other Mexican-style food and would not have outdoor seating, drive through service, or serve alcohol. The court agrees with Quintana that tacos and burritos are Mexican-style sandwiches, and the original written commitment does not restrict potential Americans to only American cuisine-style sandwiches. Bobe said the original agreement would also apply to made-to-order restaurants offering Greek gyros, Indian naan wraps, or Vietnamese banh mi. The famous taco already has equipment and signage in place at the strip mall, but it was not yet clear when the eatery would open. And there you have what in our nation. All right, let me get the devotional out, and we'll get into it. This episode's kind of short and sweet, but that's okay. This comes from Promises from God's Heart. Promises from God's Heart regarding the Holy Spirit. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. He is the Spirit of Truth. The world is unable to receive him because he doesn't see him or know him. But you do know him because he remains with you and will be in you. John fourteen sixteen through 18 John the Baptist answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one is coming who is more powerful than I. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Luke three fifteen through 16 Turn to me and receive my gentle correction. Watch, and I will pour out my Spirit on you. I will share with you my wise words in order to redirect your lives. Proverbs 1, 23. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will place my spirit within you and cause you to follow my statutes and carefully observe my ordinances. Ezekiel 36, 26-27. Also, the Spirit helps us with our weakness. We do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself speaks to God for us, even begs God for us with deep feelings that words cannot explain. God can see what is in people's hearts, and he knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit speaks to God for his people in the way God wants. Romans eight twenty six through 27 Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or the one to come. Matthew twelve, thirty-two. The one who keeps his commands remains in him, and he in him. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the Spirit he has given us. 1 John three twenty-four. It is true that I baptize you with water as a sign of your repentance, but the one who follows me is far stronger than I am. Indeed, I am not fit to carry his shoes. He will baptize you with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Matthew 3, verse 11. 
And that is it for today's video. As always, be a little kinder to yourself. Get out there and see this big, beautiful world we live in. And find some time to crochet or knit. So do some crafting. Enjoy your life a little bit. See you guys soon. Bye.